nations of the earth now rejoice. All the nations of the earth now rejoice. All the people of God sing His praise. All the people of God sing His praise. Everything that had breath shout for joy. Everything that had breath shout for joy. Cause everything that is beautiful belongs to you. watching our weekly broadcast with the House of Christ. I'm Dr. Geraldine Rush and I just want to encourage you to catch us each Friday at 11 a.m. here on Channel 17 and you'll be so glad that you did. And if you would like to catch us on Facebook Live, we broadcast our sermon every Sunday between 1045 and 11 a.m. So just send a message uh, to become a friend and you can watch us on Facebook Live. God bless you. Continue to grow in Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to be looking at verses 12 through 20. All right. It says, For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For, in fact, the body is not one member, but many. Amen. Amen. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? Mm -hmm. But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, they would be the body, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. Amen, somebody. Amen. Father God, we truly thank you for what you're doing in the lives of the believers, and we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. Oh God, we bless your name today, and we honor you. You told us, God, to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. So, Father, we're here in reverence to you on today. Nobody else, we just came to have a little talk with you, Jesus, and to praise you for being our Lord, our God, and our Savior. And now, Lord, it is I standing in the need of prayer. So, Father God, I ask that you would bring those things to my remembrance, that you would have me to share with your people on today. Help us, Lord, to be so much better for the time that we spend in your presence. And, God, give us what we need on this day, Father God. Help us to be all that you have called us to be and lead us into your glory, O oh God, as you have set forth in your word. Have your way in this place, Father God. Have your way in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, while I was searching for a topic this week, the Lord just put on my heart. Amen. Stop being a spectator and become a participator. Amen. Amen, somebody. Stop being a spectator and become a participator. Glory to God. Amen. As always, I'd like to give you a little backdrop into what was going on in history at this time. And uh, talk about what Paul was trying to get the church in Corinth to understand. Amen. And it always helps because everything that happens in the Bible, we can correlate it to what's going on right now. Amen, somebody. The word says that there's nothing new under the sun, and it sure isn't. The city of Corinth was a melting pot of many nationalities. That's just like America is. It's a melting pot. Amen, somebody. Amen. Corinth had been synonymous with debauchery and gross immorality, which means all kind of stuff was going on. Sort of like today. Amen. The city was intellectually proud, materially affluent, and morally corrupt. Amen. 
The prevailing philosophy in Corinth encouraged its people to indulge in their desires. Whatever they might be, greed, dishonesty, drunkenness, impurity, lust, selfishness of every kind flourished in Corinth. Amen. So it was just uh, a, another Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. Amen. What am I saying? You see how history com continues to uh, repeat itself? This was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. Now the New Testament is going on in Corinth here in America. Amen. It's happening in all of our cities. Come on. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. The Corinthians recognized no law but their own lust and desires and no God but themselves. That's a cut. This is, this is the way the world is going. Amen. Amen. It sounds like today. We are encouraged to do what? Wrong. The TV is full of the devil's plots. Amen. Drawing us into unrighteousness. They have shows on TV like Married at First Sight. You don't even know nothing about these people. What a mess. Amen. They, they have shows new day. Terrible. This, this is what's going on. Wife swapping. That's the show too. Here you go over to some stranger's house with his family and kids. Come on. <laughs> Amen. Now, anything you can think of, it's going on in America. Amen. Amen. It is just, you know, we, and we're, we're sitting here in the midst of all of this stuff. There's still a few good Christians out here. Amen, somebody. Amen. And, you know, and we don't watch that crap because if you don't watch it, it won't stay on TV. Mm -hmm. But guess what? There's a lot of them watching it because it's been on for years. Come on, somebody. Amen. Paul came to Corinth, amen, and stayed with Aquila and Priscilla. They were Jews, come on, that had been expelled from Rome. Amen. They worked together through the week as tent makers. And Paul preached in the synagogue on the Sabbath. Amen. But soon the legalistic Jews refused to allow Paul to teach and preach in the synagogue. And guess what he did? He moved next door to the house of justice and continued to spread the gospel. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, look, one, you know, just because you don't want me preaching in here, the word can still go forth wherever you stand. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. You can stand on the street corner and preach Jesus. Come on. You can preach in your house. You can preach, come on, at the store. Come on, somebody. God has a way of opening up doors when one door closes. Amen. Amen. He'll, he'll, if he's called you to do something, he's going to make a way. Yes, he is. He's going to make a way. The new believers had little knowledge of the Old Testament, which means they didn't know anything about the commandments. Amen. They didn't, under, they didn't have access to it. This was only in the synagogues of the Jews. Amen. And, of course, the new converts were what? Gentiles, Greeks, and foreigners. Amen. These were the new converts. And so Paul went to great lengths to try to teach them about the gospel. And so, as you can see, that's what the whole New Testament is about. Learning about Jesus. What he did for you. How to live in the world. And not be corrupt by all this other stuff going on. That's what the whole New Testament is about. It's teaching us what Jesus expects of us. Amen. Just to love him and worship him. And he, you know, and if we depend on him, he'll guide us in the rest of this stuff. He'll guide us around all this mess that's going on. Come on, somebody. We don't have to take part in it. We don't have to be a part of it. But 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 Paul wanted to teach the, the new converts how to live in Christ. Pagan influences and practices engulfed the church and tried to undermine Paul's authority. Amen. Because what? People that just get saved, you don't you don't know anything else but what you've been doing. Am I right about it? Amen. And so you bring that same attitude, that same mentality into the church. And then you want to start doing the same stuff that you were doing out there in the church. And when people come against it, guess what folks do? They get mad and go home. Mm -hmm. Amen. But you know what? But God wants us to learn so we can do better. You know what? When we become a, a, a Christian, we become what? A new creation in Christ. Mm -hmm. Old things are passed away. Now you have become new. That's what that word means. you got to let go of that old stuff. you got to learn what God wants from you. It ain't what you was doing out there. Come on, somebody. Amen. He wants you to change and transform your life to receive eternal life. But if you keep doing that same mess that you were doing out there, you're not going to make it. 
Amen, somebody. Glory to God. Amen. So Paul left, and so they tried to undermine Paul, so he left the church and was preaching right next door. But even the stuff found him. Come on. Come on, what am I saying? We can't get away from stuff. We just have to deal with it and come on and, and, and work with it and get people to understand that there is a better way. Paul wrote the church to address the abuse and the diversity of the spiritual gifts within the body. Amen. Amen. And people just, you know, they had this attitude, well, if I can't, you know, if I can't do like everybody else is doing, then I don't want to be a part of the body. You ain't called to do what everybody else is doing. Amen. Very few people are called to preach, but we got a bunch of them out here trying to. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Amen. Very few, few people are called to teach. That's why we got so much bad doctrine going on. You want to teach somebody something when you don't know yourself. Mm -hmm. That's why we have the, uh, the House of Christ College of Ministry to teach people. Amen, somebody. Jesus worked with the disciples for three years. Paul went to, uh, he went to, you know, he... Let me see where did Paul go. But he went to Gamela, amen, and learned under him for over, uh, I know it was over three years, amen. And then he came back and started preaching. He didn't just jump right out the door and go out there to start trying to tell folks because what? Paul only knew about Judaism. He didn't know about Christianity. So he had to go and learn. I'm telling you the same thing. Our understanding of the word of God, if you don't hold, have the Holy Spirit, you can't understand what God is trying to tell you. That's true. The people want to always want to uh, interpret the word as being literal. It's not. This is a spiritual book. So if you ain't spirit filled, you don't understand it. Jesus spoke in parables to get you to understand what he was talking about. Because if he gave it to them straight, they, they wouldn't have a clue about what he was saying. Amen. So he would always uh, give parables about farming. Come on. About sheep and different things that was going on in the culture so that people could understand it. We, we do the same thing today. We'll use examples that you understand. Come on. So that you can grasp what God is trying to teach you. Amen. So people wanted to bring their worldly attitude into the church before being discipled and trained into the word of God. We got these same problems going on today. So there ain't nothing new happening. It's just a later time. Come on, somebody. The church was never established for you to come and sit down and watch. Amen. Amen. It is something that you become a part of. Amen. You participate in worship. In ministry, we work together. Come on, somebody. In Bible study and Sunday school, we grow together. In the church itself, we build together. Amen. We build the kingdom as we love, fellowship, and praise Christ and each other along the way. Amen. It teaches us, amen, what God wants from our lives. And really, he wants to transform you so that you can be the best you you can be. God wants you to become the person that he's called you to be. Amen. But many times, we didn't get this in the beginning. Our parents didn't, a lot of our parents didn't bring us to church. So guess what? We were taught the world. And now that you're in Christ, you got to learn, you got to be taught the word. Here in our text, Paul encourages the church to work together and realize that everyone is important. It ain't just the preacher and the teachers, come on, the associate pastors, everybody in the church is important. Amen, somebody. This is why here at the House of Christ, I always make sure that members are involved in the worship experience. Amen. That you're doing something. Amen. Because we're all important. I need you. Amen. You need me. Amen. Amen. It ain't going to happen unless we work together. Come on. Amen. Verse 12, he says, Just as the body, no one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body. So is it with Christ. Amen. God has called a lot of people. You see them spiritual gifts and they talk about what? He's called some, uh, the gifts for the church. He called some to what, what, be a prophet, to be apostles, to be preachers, to be teachers. Come on, to be evangelists. Amen. That's what he called. But then he's given us spiritual gifts. The gift of laying on hands. The gift of talking in tongues. The gift of giving. Come on. The gift of exhortation. Amen. God has given us the, the, amen. So many gifts 
to be used in the church. Christ's workmen, as Christ's workmen, we all have been given a spiritual gift to use in the church to help build the kingdom of God. If we look at our own body, we have many parts, amen, that work together to form one body. This is the same as the kingdom. So for my body, it takes the arms, the leg, the head. Come on. It takes all of my body parts working to be this one body. Amen. If some of it is missing, then I'm not going to be whole. Amen. And which means what? The other piece is going to have to work even harder. In the church, if we don't have, amen, the people with the gift of service. Come on. The people with the gift of of, of teaching and evangelizing. Come on. The people with the gift of love. The church ain't going to function right. If we don't have people loving folks into the kingdom, how they going to know that God loves them regardless? Amen. Amen. This is, this is, you know, all these parts have to work together to, you know, to accomplish the mission that God has assigned to every church. You need people. We need prayer warriors. Amen. Amen. First, Paul taught that every part is unique and serves its own function in the body. God has blessed you with unique gifts. He has. Oh, yes. And a lot of times people just don't really understand how to use their gift. You know you got a gift, but you don't know how to use it in the church. That's how you that's why you come and talk to the pastor. And God will let you know, and then he'll let him know where to place you. Come on, in ministry, to be most effective. Amen, somebody. Amen. When your gift is used properly in the church, you serve your functions and contribute to the body. Amen. This blesses God. It blesses other people. See, this is the thing. The gift that God has given us is not for us. It's for God. It's to build his church. You know, Having the gift of being able to talk. That gift wasn't for me to go out and make money as a motivational speaker. That gift was for me to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody. And now that I'm walking in my gift, amen. And see, everyone that, you know, this has to be a gift. Everybody can't get up here and preach it. You done been around some people that get up and you go, I'm waiting for the anointing to show up. Well, they're going to show up if they were called to that position. Come on, somebody. And, and we start, and they get up here, and they scream, and they holler, and they shout. I mean, they do everything to give you a show to watch, but never exhort the word. Come on, somebody. And God wants to teach his people about the word. Amen. When your gift is used properly in the church, you serve your function and contributes to the body. For example... You may have the gift of helping. Maybe this means that you work in the nursery while others volunteer in other ways. Oh, yeah. Just because one organ perform, cannot perform the function of another does not make it less useful. That's true. Amen. That's true. We need people that love children. Amen. amen. And want to teach them. Mm -hmm. You know, so that their parents, amen, can get the sermon. It's tough now when you got kids sitting with you in church and they're talking and, and, and squirming around. You know how kids are. They don't like to be still. And you're sitting there trying to tell them to be quiet and be still. You don't get the sermon and they don't get nothing either. Amen. 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 So when we have a nursery that they can go to, guess what? They're in there singing songs and they're reading them the stories of the Bible and teaching them from that level. Mm -hmm. Amen. And now the parents get something and the children get something. They're growing up in the ammunition of the Lord. Amen, Amen somebody. Lord, this is how we teach and how we work together. And just because that volunteers in the nursery don't make them less useful to the church because you in here, you may be the usher. We need both of you. You are important. Amen, somebody. This is what we're talking about. You got to get in and don't come what? And be a spectator. This It's time out for that. It's time to participate in what God's doing. Amen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> in our lives. It's no longer just sitting there watching. Get involved. Amen. Get involved. Amen. Amen. And just because what? He says, and I can't hear, doesn't mean that it's not a part of the body. Amen. Every part has to be used, amen, 
because it serves a function. If you can't see where you're going, a lot of times you'll never get there. Amen. Amen. This is why, you know, when it, it takes someone to, it takes something to make up for what you're missing. This is why people that can't see have to see an eye dog. It gets them to where they're needing to go. Amen. And he and he protects them on the journey. Amen. And we need, we, we, you know, people need help. Glory to God. And just because you're not preaching in the pulpit or singing in the choir doesn't mean that you're not a contributing part of the body. Amen. See, this is why, you know, we have to get that. And maybe, you know, it may be that you're just on the uh, seniors ministry. Y'all fold the bulletins every uh, Sunday. Or y'all, you know, working uh, with, with, with people going to the nursery. Or, or you're doing different things. There's still usefulness. You see what I'm saying? Amen. There's still a job. You can call people that haven't been at church for a while. Amen. There's Amen. something that you can do to contribute. And that is important to let people know that we care about them and we miss them. Amen. Amen. The pastor can't do everything. Amen. Amen. And this is what people think, that he, he, he has to do it all. No, he doesn't. You're a part of this ministry. you got something that you need to be doing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody use your gifts, what? To the glory of God. Amen. The most important parts are the ones that are not seen. And you know that most of the time the most important parts of the body are the ones that people don't even think about. Amen. Security people. The cleaning crew. Most important, who wants to come to a nasty building? Amen. Who wants to have their car stolen while you're in the church? They're they still in them all over the place now. They, they, they ain't safe in Germantown. They got security. Amen. <laughs> so wherever you go, we need people. And that's why it's so important that when we do, if we're taping our ministries, that way they're working inside of the church. Maybe they don't get to hear the sermon, but they get a free copy of the tape so they can go home and watch it. Amen, somebody. Amen. And then you rotate it where that person don't have to do it all the time. That's true. They get to come in and enjoy worship service and they only have to do their part maybe once a month or twice a month. <coughs> to God be the glory. It's important. These things are important. Verse 15 tells us what? <clears throat> in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 12. Verse 15 says, Now if the foot should say, Because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. It would not, it would not for that reason, this should, should be if or not for that reason, stop being a part of the body. You see what I'm saying? Hey, don't, don't envy what other people do. That's true. Find your own place. That's true. Better yet, make up a ministry. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Yeah. There's, there's always something to do. You know, I talked with a lady uh, not too long ago, and she's a part of a church, but she runs a clothing ministry out of her house. So she just gets the things from everybody that they volunteer, and she says she got a room set up in her house to where she's got all these clothes and different things set up. So she said when the pastor called her and said, do you have anything for, for somebody this size? She said, no, I don't keep it at the church because I don't have time to go up there. But I just bring it to the church when he calls or he needs it. Amen. And I run the clothes closet. People are doing the same thing with food pantries. Oh, yeah. Amen. They might not be able to get to church, but they can do it at their home. Amen. And you'll be surprised. You can start your own ministry. That's your ministry that God has given you. And you're working it through what? Your church. And look how it can flourish and be a part of what God wants you to do. So there is always something for you to do. Amen, somebody. And be a part. Glory to God. Here in verse 16 it says, And if the ear should say, Because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, if, would not for the reason stop being a part of a we, we just can't. You see what I'm saying? If, just like our body needs all of its parts, <clears throat> the church needs everybody working and functioning as a whole. That's what this sermon is about. Amen, somebody. There is room for you to grow and to get involved. Amen. I, I, I love, you know, uh, brainstorming with people about things that they can do. 
Amen. You could be a part, you know, things that we want to do as a community. Uh, one person told me about a ministry that they're doing called Soup for the Soul. Ever so often they serve soup, amen, to the community. And people that come in to get it. This time of year, homeless folks, they love to have a bowl of soup and some bread. Come on, somebody. <laughs> they're just different things that you can do. So they do these things, amen, soup for the soul. And you know, and when and just like if we're gonna do these things, you can buy a can of soup every week. You see what I'm saying? To add or the materials to make it, and by the time it's it comes time for us to do the soup for the soap, you got five or six pots mm -hmm. to feed a hundred or more people. You see what I'm saying? If you want to do something, we can find a way to do it to help and support. It ain't always about you standing up in front of somebody. Come on, somebody. That's true. Amen. It ain't always about being seen. Mm -hmm. You know what? God, what the word tells us, when you do a kind gesture unseen, God rewards you openly. That's the best blessing I want. See, because when other folks see it and you talk about it, you got your reward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you already got your reward. Everybody talking and praising you. But when we do it unseen, oh, God gets the glory and he blesses you. You hear me? Those unseen blessings, they build treasures in heaven. Come on. Mm -hmm. Amen. And there's a part for everybody. Again, Paul points out that the body cannot function as well without even one of its parts. That's right. <clears throat> one part of the body can't say to another, I don't need you. This would be like the volunteers, come on, the hands, saying to the pastor, the mouth, we don't need you. The mouth takes in food and water that nourishes what? The entire body, including the hands. Amen. So you see how we are joined together and we need each other? If the mouth ceases, so does the hands. Amen. Neither should the mouth bites the hand that it feeds. Come on. Amen, somebody. Regardless of a person's gift, no one should ever say, I don't need you. Amen. See, the devil is alive. Yes. And the thing about that, too, sometimes we'll put people in places where it don't work good for them or the church. But guess what? There is a place that's going to work good for you. We just got to work at finding it. Amen. All the nations of the earth now rejoice. All the nations of the earth now rejoice. All the people of God sing His praise. All the people of God sing His praise. Everything that had breath shout for joy. Everything that had breath shout for joy. Because everything that is beautiful belongs to you. How excellent is your name? How excellent is your name? How 